All right. R2C2 has joined the uh, Ringer Podcast Network. CC Sabat is here. Ryan Rucco is here. They just recorded their new their new first podcast uh, with Max Scherzer. And I mean, we might as well talk about that. We're taping this. It's almost three o'clock Pacific time. CC is pessimistic. What if I if I give you over or under nine and a half days left in this baseball season? You go over or under. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going way under that. <laughs> <laughs> under. What I'm would you do? Under. Are you? Would you be done at this point? You would be in your car driving home. Yeah. You know what? I would have. Uh, I keep saying that I would. I wouldn't have um, started, but I know myself. I would have been out there with the guys. I would have been out there with my teammates. But this weekend, like after seeing what's happening now, like the Yankees going to Philly and then staying there two days, not playing, supposed to come home to play tomorrow, but then now we're going to Baltimore. I would have definitely gotten in my car and just drove the fuck home. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing this. Like, and like I can't. I, like my 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 shit don't work like that. I, I can't do it. Well, it's starting to happen in football. We're seeing, I I lost some of my Patriots defense today, but I assume <laughs> Seen that. I assume. Don't you guys think in baseball we're gonna just see guys be like, "Hey, man, I'm good. I'm <laughs> out. Just leave and just now. Leaving. Yeah. yeah. And that and that's it. You know what? I, I will say, Bill, I would have thought that until we talked to Max Scherzer. Yeah. He had the most Pollyannic view of anybody I, I, I think I've heard from yet. Like, he's like, yeah, we knew. I mean, you guys will hear when you hear the episode, but he's like, he's like, yeah, we, we kind of knew we were going to be dealing with this in, you know, some fashion at some point. So we've prepared to this and we feel like we can engineer around it. So it actually, it made me feel a little better because he's high up with the players union. So it makes me yeah. feel like that may be more of the consensus among the players than I realized it was. Yeah, he I, he made it. He made it seem. I mean, I mean, he has a great attitude about it. But he loves baseball. He wants to pitch. Like he yeah. wants to be out there. So he wants this to work. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but I, you know, I mean, you know, it is what it is. He knows. He knows a lot more than I do about it. But just outside looking in, I'm. I'm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be like to be in that locker room? Especially like you know, you're in a clubhouse, but people are trying to stay. Yeah, within but, six feet of each other, you're on planes together. Like, I just, I, I would just think that'd be so weird. We spend so much time together on planes. Like, you know, the Yankees, we have breakfast together. Like, we do a lot of things, you know, all together. So, to not really have to sit close to your teammates and like, you know, not be able to 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 really hang out, um, seems like it'd be super hard. But, um, like, I mean, you know, like Max was talking about, you you're here on the episode. You know, guys want this to work. You know, everybody wants to get out there and play. So I'm sure everybody's following protocol as much as they can. But it's hard. Even when I'm down there, um, you know, I got the special assistant job so I can go down to Yankee Stadium. And you have to have a mask on all the time, like indoors. You know what I'm saying? So um, that just makes it, a, you know, a little tougher. But it's something that, you know, we can do to, you know, get the season off and, and you know, try to get these fans a, a, a real season. Ryan, CC loves baseball and obviously would talk himself into any scenario. You and I are just fans, although you would do some announcing. Um, have you been shocked by how boring baseball is when you strip away <laughs> a lot of the stuff and it's just 30 seconds between pitches and nothing else happening and nothing else to look at? You know what's funny, man, is I'm I'm actually... I've been surprisingly happy with the crowd bikes and the way they've been or the fake crowd noise and the way they've been pumping it in. So I think that like my focus in between pitches has been more on like, oh, you know what? They kind of nailed that murmur. Like, yeah, that, that sounds like the right <laughs> crowd murmur. Like, so, so, so like I've been thinking of it more technically. So I, I've i actually I've been good. I, I, I've been enjoying it. But I, you know, I also I, I was actually thinking about it from a, a broadcasting standpoint. I'm like, more than any other sport you do play by play for. And I do a ton of basketball and I do a good amount of baseball and I'll do some football and I do boxing. Like baseball, you need to have, you know, all this all these stories and the conversations and you, you know, it's only about 10 to 12 minutes of action. So to your point, you take away like the ability to get those stories, to have those conversations for the most part and then 
the other stimuli in between pitches. I was thinking about how often we're showing fans, just kind of having fun. I can Some go to guy Paul eating O'Neal. a hot dog yeah, or something. Exactly. You know what I mean? It, like, it, exactly. I can go to Paul O'Neill, like, oh, Paul, that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, Ryan, you know, let's get it ordered up to the booth. You know, like, that's gone. So yeah. to your point, yeah, that will that would be challenging, like, to be on air during that time, especially. I've noticed the announcers, and you can feel this with the bubble basketball, too. They kind of is the in basketball, they're not there. So they have no feel for how to interact with the game. And in baseball, same thing, but now there's no fans, no noise. It, the announcers are really overcompensating. And they're it's almost like they they feel like they have to fill the air and they're just gonna keep talking. And it's like and it's like I, I would actually go the other way and scale back. So I, I'm interested when ESPN and Turner take over when we actually have the real games, we don't have the local announcers anymore. I, I'll be interested to see how they handle that balance, right? Because you yeah. don't want to overpower it, but you also need to fill the void. So there's some there's some it, in between thing. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Bill, it it's so funny you mentioned that, man, because I called the WNBA's opening four games this weekend from studio in Bristol. And I felt exactly what you're talking about. I I like I called myself a couple times, like I am definitely, and I, I talk a decent amount anyway, but like I'm like. I'm definitely talking more than I normally would, like, try, <laughs> you know, because and, and in some sense, you're like, well, because you don't want it to sound empty and hollow, right, to the viewer. But in the other sense, where to your point, Bill, laying out could be better is they are hearing sounds of the game and effects that you normally wouldn't be hearing. Right. And there's some yeah. value to that for the for the viewer and for the listener. Less Bill, in baseball. I have, yeah. Have you have you liked the look of the NBA games, though? Because me and Ryan were talking about that on the pod, like. Seems like we're watching like a Broadway show, like in their playing. Like it's it's a weird feel. It's like a it's like a stage almost like set up. You know what I'm saying? I it's worked better than I thought. <laughs> and I think they'll keep tinkering with it. But honestly, it looks like the video game. It looks like the yeah, video game. Yeah, it does. Game. It does. My son yeah. plays 2K all the time. And it really the way they've done it reminds me of that. But you you talk about the ambience, like OKC played the Celtics last week. And the announcers, there was, I don't know why, but there might not have even been announcers for a quarter. And you could just hear this sneaker squeak. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but whatever they were doing, I could hear Chris Paul. And my dad was telling me in Boston, it became kind of a story the next day. Like the Celtics weren't vocal enough. Chris Paul was so much more vocal than the Celtics. Do the Celtics have a leadership problem? And all from people listening to Chris Paul just yelling at his teammates. And I was like, you know, I'm old enough to remember we had season tickets in the 70s and 80s with the Garden. They're just playing the fucking organ. And that's it. And we could hear, every, we were sitting close, we could hear everything on the court. And I kind of want that to come back. I part of me is thinking like, bring back the organ. We don't need any of the musical cues. Just have like an organist in there, just <laughs> crank it away. But uh, Cece, you must, I know you're a huge Hoops fan. You must love hearing the guys talking to each other. Yeah, I, I really enjoy that. I mean, in any sport, when you can get like that insight and just hear things that you normally wouldn't as a fan, um, you know, we love that. So yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, I love, and I even love like the, the angles. Like you saw Chris Paul throw a pass on the baseline the other day that he normally wouldn't be able to throw because fans would have been in the way. You know what I'm saying? He got a little more right. space, made mm. that pass on the baseline, and, like, you know, it turned it into a, to a great pass. So that type of stuff, you know, we'll get to see these guys be a lot more creative, you know, without, you know, with having so much space on the court. You know what's you funny know, about that, Bill? Like, there are so many times when I'm doing a game, sitting courtside, and I'll, like, for some reason, at one point or another, maybe I just, like, you know, I take the one ear off, and like you're listening and you're like, oh, man, like I forgot how cool it is. Like when you're hearing all these sounds and the interactions, which like, you know, if you're sitting, even though we have effects maybe to a certain degree in our headset, so you just don't you don't hear them when you're hearing like the game when you're calling it. And you realize and see, you know, you sit courtside all the time, man. Like it's cool hearing them interact like that. So I actually do think that'll be good for the fans hearing some more of that this season. They'll have to tape delay it. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things you pick up. <laughs> um Courtside's weird because depending on where you are, it's actually a really uncomfortable vantage point of the game. You 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 can't get a feel for a lot of it, but it makes up for it with the audio experience and hearing the guys mumbling under their breath to the refs because it's such a big part of it. I'm sure baseball is like this too. 
the umps just don't want to be shown up. The referees yeah. don't want to be shown up. But if you're if you're doing like, hey man, that call fucking sucked. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. You're holding your shirt over your <laughs> mouth. Like you can kind of get away with it, but you could pick up all that stuff. What would you want to hear from baseball, CC? If the if the mics, like, because obviously you have the guy at first base. Yeah, you know what? I would honestly just like they did spring training games this year where the guys were actually mic'd up during their at bats. Like I would love to hear that. I mean, obviously, you know, Britt threw an inning with the with the mic on. Like I don't know how hard it would be for pitchers, but if we can get like Rizzo with a mic the whole game, like I would pay for that. Like I would, I, you know what I'm saying? Like some of those funny guys in the league, you just get them a mic for the whole game, let them go up to the plate, and you know he plays first base and he's you know real personable. So I think. You know, if we can get those, like how they did in spring training, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Would you have worn a mic? Never. And they would have to bleep everything out. It would have to be tape delayed by two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, the best guy ever for that would have been Pedro, because he would have been screaming and swearing at everybody for three yeah. and a half straight hours. You would have just oh, heard me yelling at umpires the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do if baseball goes away? What happens? The NBA like, picks it up for us, man. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> as baseball fans, we just, we're going to have like a potentially a 10 day season and then it's just <sighs> gone. We have no see, champion, nothing. But see, that's why, that's why I don't see it happening, Bill, because it's like, I, I think now that they've committed to this, like, yeah, granted, I'm sure ideally they were going to avoid, you know, half a team getting it at one time. But I, I think once you're in it, you, you kind of have decided I am, I'm going through with this unless you know whatever you saw some ridiculous amount of cases like you have 150 players but you know they just got the results back zero of the the other 29 teams right had positive you know cases so i just feel like it's going to be a fire drill but if they're willing to like make up the schedule as they go like they're seemingly doing right now diverting teams to different cities i think that shows me that they're just hell bent on finding a way to play these games however many they can and then they'll go to win percentages if they have to yeah but are you guys good with like what if fucking baltimore plays 35 games and they win a lot of you know what i'm saying like in the winning percentage is is what it is and they get into the playoffs like I don't understand like how they're going to figure this out if guys some teams only play 50 games other teams play 60 you know, some teams play 52. Like, how, is, how are they going to figure this out, man? Like, it just seems It's got to be winning percentage, right? That, yeah, but, uh, I mean. The I thing is, because we see this happen with the Premier League, the sample size is so small. Basically, anything can happen in a, mm-hmm. if it's a 50-game season or whatever. Yeah. You can just have two people get hurt in a division and one other team gets hot for two weeks. And then, it, you know, you're, you're, you're flying. Ryan, you're not going to be surprised. I asked Cece before you joined us when we we weren't taping it. I was like, "Would you if you won if you won the title in this weird goofy season, would that count for you?" And he's like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's a full title. No yeah. asterisk here. No, if you if you play, man, and you play in the playoffs, I don't give a damn what the scenario is, especially this year. Because it's going to be harder this year. This is this this is crazy. It's like uh, unlike any other year we've ever experienced. So you win this, man. You can put an asterisk right. by it, but it's still a fucking title. <laughs> right. <laughs> In some ways, too, right? Like, it's like where it could be harder is you have all these teams, to your point, Bill, that otherwise wouldn't even be factoring in, probably, that now all of a sudden do factor in. Like, you know, yeah. if you... Even with the expanded playoffs, right? If you have to beat, like, the Blue Jays in a three-game series... You know all, that you could easily lose to them at a three-game series and be gone. You know, yeah. and so right. I, I think it will. I think the I think as fans, the only time it may feel delegitimized if, is if we end up with two like weird teams in the World Series that otherwise we don't think ever would have gotten there. And yeah, then but who are, those like, weird eh. te- who are those weird teams though? You I know don't know. Like- well, even if if you ended up with like the Blue Jays and the Marlins in the World Series, like you may end up feeling like. And does this really feel real? Like if it's the Yankees and Dodgers, you're, you're gonna feel like, oh no, this is, you know, this is real. But that, that ain't fair, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that's no, not I, fair. I get, just because, I get it. like, it has to be a big market team to win. Like I think they, <laughs> I think it. I mean, I think it'd be cooler if somebody else came out of this. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I'm a Yankee fan. I would love for us to be in the World Series, but I think it'd be fun for the fan base of baseball if it was the Reds and whoever, the, whoever else. You know what I'm saying? 
Ryan just revealed himself as a big market baseball guy. That's <laughs> It's a baseball Try, Republican. Fuck the small like, market like, teams. Like, That's right. All the, all the money. Uh, teams. You know, it is. I was a huge fan of reading about the ABA yeah. back in the 70s. And they would have these seasons where, like, a team would just fold after eight games. And then they would, <laughs> you know, then uh, they would figure out the schedule. The last season they played, they only finished the season, I think, with six teams. And I think wow. they started with, like, nine or ten. So wow. it reminds me of, like, what we grew up reading about with some of the leagues that were trying to get going or trying to hold on, or you might have a baseball season where it ends. If, if, if you guys are right and this keeps going, it might be 24 teams by the end or that, you know, you better have <laughs> six teams just get suspended. But I, I think CC made the key point. It's fits the Yankees or the Dodgers or the Cubs. If it's a real team that has to get suspended with real money and, and big stars and stuff like that. And they keep the season going after that. That's what, yeah. That's when you know they're committed to the bitter end. Yeah, you, you're right. It's a lot easier to stomach the Marlins dealing with this than if all of a sudden half the Yankees had it. No, no doubt about it. That that that's very true. I do think like you know we're always. Isn't it so funny now too? We used to like debate like can you can you add this rule like baseball is such a traditional sport can they bend just a little bit to the idea of this and now it's like <laughs> you got no choice but to be malleable because the only way you're going to have a season yeah. right do you think we'll get rid of the code finally cc <laughs> i hope so i mean but i i was watching mlb network the other day and somebody was on tim anderson about bat flip and i'm like yo let it go <laughs> man like i mean it's never going to be a fun game if you guys freak out about bat flips like it is what it is, man. Like, I mean, I would love for them to get rid of the code. I would love for them to keep the runner on second base in, in, uh, in extra innings. Like, I would love for them to do that. So you don't have to waste pitchers. I mean, you know, nobody wants to play 17, 18 innings. You know what I mean? Like, let's get the guy on second base. I mean, even if, that, if it, it's not the 10th inning and the 11th inning, put the guy on second base and we go from there. No, the the eighteen inning games are for people like me in my twenties in Boston with nothing better to do, getting home <laughs> from bartending, and the Red Sox are in the sixteenth inning and be like, "This is great! I'll stay up at four o'clock watching this." <laughs> that, that, those are the only winners with eighteen inning games. Ryan, what was it like? I'm sure you've done this before, but now you're gonna have to do it over and over again. What was it like to announce a game from a studio? and try to have the same kind of energy, not just the filling the spots, but just like you're basically narrating a TV screen. Yeah, it's we. You know what's funny too? Like I had them, we talked about like our whole monitor setup and I had them give us kind of like, um, uh, we have you know a couple of huge monitors that show the game cut, right? Like what you're watching at home when you're watching the game. <laughs> and then I had them give us like some different cameras as well, just to see like, cause you know, if I'm watching the floor, I'm seeing things at times and leading the director, right? I'm not just reacting to the monitor. But doing the game, it's like you really, you can't even take your eyes off, at least maybe I'll adjust the main game cut because it's the only way you're really able to see the action happening. And yeah. that was, you know, that was weird for me just getting used to having that limited vision. But the thing that I felt good about actually was like, I was wondering, am I going to be able to like get into a call, you know, like, because it feels like such a sterile environment. Whereas like, if I'm courtside, there are times where I'm like standing up, fist pumping. You just like get your whole body into a call. And I was like, I don't know. And then Allie Quigley in our second game on uh, Sunday, she hits a go ahead shot to lead this like late comeback for Chicago, a three right off the bench with like 15 seconds left. And I'm like all into it, like, <laughs> like really like body and like, and I was like, yeah. And Rebecca turns to me, she was like, that like, it sounded real. And I was like, okay, good. Like I, it, I did feel. I felt invested and I was wondering, I think actually having some of that sound in the arena, it helps like, and, and even like them pumping into cr the fake, um, you know, defense, defense, all the ar arena, like sort of musical choices. Mm. I think it helps you kind of simulate a little more of a real experience than I thought it would be. So I felt better about it than I thought I was going to, because that was my biggest worry, man. You know, you're sitting in a studio. Are you going to feel the, you know, the stakes, right? Like, I don't know. Have you fit watching? I know it's, you've only watched scrimmages so far, but even like watching the Red Sox, have you felt the stakes? Have the games felt meaningful to you yet, Bill? No. The basketball felt closer because that I just in general, it, it I'm just used to watching at least basketball in a closed environment like that from summer league. So it felt yeah. more normal. The baseball, 
the fans were just a bigger part of it than I, I, I think I realized. And I knew it was a big part of it, but you just, there's so much dead time. I, I can't get around it. But then when you see, you know, somebody hits a homer and they switch to that overhead shot and there's empty seats, it's just hard not to think like, wow, this is weird. And I don't know when you get past that. With the NBA, you don't really have to worry about it because they've gimmicked it so you're not thinking about it. In baseball, I, I don't know how you, how you don't think about it. I'll tell you this, though. This is CeCe's one chance to be a color analyst for uh, <laughs> baseball games because you don't have Listen, to travel, right? Just do it on Zoom. It <laughs> sounds good, but me and Ryan did two innings of one of those summer camp games, and it, it's, yeah. no, it's no chance I can do a game without cussing. I can't go four <laughs> innings without dropping an F bomb. So that's that's not looking too good in my future doing games. <laughs> it's yeah, maybe it has to be a special channel. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, that's what CC wants, man. He wants like a, you know, like a, a a YouTube simulcast where you could you could curse in game. Let's do that, Bill. You got you gotta hook that up for us. If you if you do if we could do a game and I could do it on here and we and me and him watch the game and I could just watch it, I think it'd be funny. I think it'd be I, great. I, I'm going to make that happen because I would like to swear just as much. So that would be really fun. <laughs> we should do a Red Sox Yankee game is what we should do. Oh, my God. Not this year. Not with this Red Sox team. <laughs> you would be our number two starter oh. right now. We have your shoulder. <laughs> um, um, hey, one of, one of CeCe's things is he happens to know like every famous athlete in every sport. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on in famous athlete circles with the with the corona <laughs> and this whole world? Give us take us behind the curtain, as Jalen Rose would say. What is what's going on in the famous worlds? You know what? I haven't really talked to anybody, man. I mean, oh, you stop know, it! I don't no, that for honestly, a second. No I mean, way. I'm trying to think. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I golf with Tuck a lot. He lives over here, so I've been seeing him. Um, you know, I talk to Stray every now and again. He's doing good, but. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really like try to bug the guys. What about the, guys the current right guys, though? What about like what about Mookie? You must have texted oh, with I him talk after to, he I, signed. I talk to I talk to Mook damn near every day. I talk to him all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, I talk to Aaron Hicks pretty much every day. Giancarlo, all these guys. So yeah, Do I mean, these guys feel good about the season. Where like, what's the vibe? I know, like I said, I mean, Mookie is like Max. You know what I'm saying? Like he he wants to play. He wants to get out there. He just got the contract. He's in L.A. Like. He's super excited. Um, you know, a few other guys are like, ah, I don't know. What are we doing? Like, should I be playing? Like, I'm getting calls all the time. So um, it, it's, you know, guys on both ends of the scale just trying to figure out, you know, what's best. And, you know, but I think the most part, the the baseball, the guys that love the game want to get out there and play. You know, Ryan, uh, I had this fantasy that Mookie was going to use the Dodgers for a year <laughs> and then come back to Boston. <laughs> And then when I talked to CC a couple months ago <laughs> and he just pissed all over it in like two seconds. He's like, no, no, he's out of there. He's, he's not leaving California. He's signing with the Dodgers. And I'm he's like, really? No in, way. Uh, no, man, no. I, I, that'll happen. Like every once in a while. I remember C has been saying that about Mookie for a while. We did a podcast last year with Mookie and Price uh, Ooh. In, in season. Yeah, it was, it was great. That was and fun. It, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It was really fun. It was also like, there was something to it, right? You have active Yankees because CeCe's still playing and active Red Sox at the same time during a series, um, which you can imagine what some of the, you know, Twitter responses were to us, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fraternizing with the enemy. But, like, I remember getting done with that and the way Mookie was talking about Boston and I was like, eh, I don't know. If he's, and CeCe immediately, <laughs> CeCe was like, oh, he's out, cuz. He's gone. He's, he's, out, he's definitely yeah. gone. Yeah. That yeah. was with KD, too. Remember, I kept telling y'all. I was yeah, like, yo, yes. KD is going to Golden State. Everybody's like, no, he can't do that. KD is going to Golden State, bro. Like, he wanted to play there. So, Mook wanted to play in LA. He wanted to get out of Boston. So, you know, I'm happy for him. How about Giannis? What's your Giannis prediction a year from now? A year from now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a free agent 2021. I keep hearing that uh, somebody, they were saying that he was he was leaving. But I, I, I he's... He seems like the type of person that will, he want to stay in Milwaukee. You know, like he, you know, he got drafted by those guys. They have a good team around him. Um, but you know what? With this bubble, like there's going to be some super teams coming out of this shit. Like they're all at an AAU camp right now. They all hanging out. Guys are figuring out who they like, who they want to hang around. Oh, I can see my game with this guy, all of that shit. So you never know after what we're witnessing, what we're going through right now, what's going to come out of this. But my gut, initial gut, is that Giannis will stay in Milwaukee. Milwaukee's a great place to play. 
And Ryan, you also have the Knicks who have cleaned house <laughs> yet again. Brand new front <laughs> office. Um, oh, and man. They, they picked a front office. I actually think this is the first smart front office they've picked where it's people who have relationships, right? Yeah. They have Leon, yeah. they, have, they have Wes, and they have this whole Kentucky pipeline. And every, you know, the players, they have really good relationships all over the map. And if they were ever going to recruit guys to come to the Knicks, that's kind of how you have to do it. It can't be with grumpy old Phil Jackson talking about the freaking triangle. It's got to be <laughs> guys who are on the ground. Yeah. You know, who knew like Anthony Davis since he was 17 and shit like that. Right. I, I agree, man. I agree. We've seen, I mean, we've seen them, you know, try it over and over and over and over again in this city and not get it right. Right. This is the first time where I feel like they hire the right guys to try and run this because it's also about like, okay, you know, if, if you know, certain ingrained mouthpieces are telling me, no, this time it's different. I, I'm not trusting that. Right. Or, you know, or if you have Steve Mills hanging around for, years and years and years and years and it's like okay you say it's different but this piece is still there like and he still ha like don't you need to change that piece this time these guys not only do they have the relationships but I, I think you know they've earned the trust of players around the league so when they say i'm telling you it's different i'm telling you, you have we have control i think they're believed i always think about this story though we we were doing a, a bucks knicks game in like porzingis's First or second year, I want to say. And Doug Collins and I are doing the game, and we go in to uh, interview KP. And he's he's missed like a couple games, and he's so excited to be back on the floor before any big injuries. It was like a tweaked ankle. He missed two games. He is so giddy, loving life, like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And Doug turns to me. He says, you see how happy he is? Let's see how long it takes before this organization bogs him down and he's upset. And all of yeah. a sudden, that smile goes away forever. And yeah. it was like, you, you know, it, it, it happened in like two months after that. Like, and obviously then the rest of his Nick tenure was a train wreck as far as the relationship between him and the organization goes. And I just think it, it became so predictable, no matter how excited guys were to be there, no matter what their skill set was, whether they could develop on their own or not, just the mentality, you couldn't handle it. So I think it takes somebody who, you know, kind of hasn't been there, right? To, to not have that weight on them anymore, to change the experience for the players so that they aren't, oh, here we go again. You know, because when one thing goes wrong, you know, Bill, it snowballs in this town. And then all of a sudden, you start to feel that momentum from the fan base and that narrative that exists with the Knicks here in this city. If, if Wes and Leon can't turn this thing around with the Knicks, then it's not going to get turned around. Like, shut it down I'm, and go I'm, home? <laughs> shut it down, bro. Like, if, if, because I, you know, I've been knowing Wes for 20 years. And, and, you know, Bill, you know, you're friends with him, too, and his relationships with everybody. Like, if, like you said, Ryan, if he's telling you something, mm -hmm. it's, it's the word. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mm -hmm. gospel. So, you know, I mean, he's been great to me, you know, for 20 years. And I, and like I said, I mean, if, if these guys can't turn it around with the relationships that they have, then there's no turning it around. I mean, guys love to play in New York. Look at DeAndre. DeAndre is with the Knicks, right? And then he stays in New York, to, but he, he wants to be in New York, but he has to go to Brooklyn to to go to an organization that's going to like, you know, take care of them and try to win and, and put them in the best situation. So guys want to be here. Guys want to play in New York. It's just, you know, you have to get the franchise right to be able to, you know, recruit the right players. You're not being able to get KD when he wanted to come to New York, when his business was moving to New York and you still can't get him. That's, that's pretty bad. We saw the same thing that's the, that you just described with the Knicks, Ryan. That's what the Clippers were like until Sterling left. And mm. I remember even making, I did a draft diary the year they drafted Eric Gordon. And it was, I think I wrote something like great pick, perfect fit for them. I can't wait to watch the hope slowly get drained out of his eyes over the next <laughs> four years. And, and it was literally exactly what happened. He came in wide eyed. He's going toe to toe with Kobe. And you know, he, and by within three years, he just has that look on his face and it's, just the way it is. So I yeah. don't know. I don't I don't know if Dolan's Dolan's as bad as Sterling, but I know that's what the culture that was in there and that's what they need to change. So I think those guys can change it. Can we talk about um how you guys got hooked up once upon a time? How did yeah. you guys end up doing a podcast together? Because it's three plus years old now. Yeah. You, you know, the the relationship started bonding over hoops, man. We yep. I the CC was in his first year with the Yankees and um 
like I quickly learned I, I was 21 doing stuff like hosting for the scoreboard at Yankee Stadium uh, the first year of the new stadium. And I quickly learned like and you know this bill, like if you're talking to athletes, they would much rather talk about anything other than their given sport. Right. Like, you know, if you're trying to build relationships and CC and I just kind of bonded talking basketball because at that time he was a Lakers fan. I was things a Lakers fan at this time. Things have changed since then. <laughs> but, you know, at that time, <laughs> he was a Lakers fan. And so we, we were, that was when they were in the finals in 09 and 10 and uh, in 09 against the Magic. And we were bonding over that. And then, then I, when I was hosting my show on ESPN Radio, you used to text me, see, when I was on the air and stuff. And, um, and then we would always talk about, we ended up having like common friend circles. And we would talk about uh, like, hey, we should do something someday. And then uh, like, oh, like we should host a show. And then I stopped hosting shows. I was like, oh, we should do a podcast. But you never know how serious, you know, someone is. And then I don't know what may, I actually never asked you, see, but you called me then but in the sp in spring training of 2017. And you were like, it's time. Let's do this now. I don't know what made you do it right then. But, but I, I that just was, was uh, like, I had just came out of rehab that year before, um, you know, in, in 16, uh, and or in 15 but and played 16 and I just felt like I was old enough you know what I'm saying like I, I was 17 years in the league at that point and I was you know basically saying whatever I wanted to so I just thought it'd be cool to for me and you to be able to do it and and one of the big things that you know me I mean we have a lot in common obviously we came from different backgrounds completely different but we like a lot of the same things and and I just I, I can feel that right away and I and I you know I text I reached out and texted him I was like man we should we should just try and just start a podcast and you know our, our our group text that we're in like is always like good conversations so um i just felt like it would work and i think the the one thing that we both wanted was it to be upbeat and not like beating down people or going at people and i don't like this guy and i don't like that guy and you know i think it was you know i, I think it was a conscious decision on both of our our parts to make it a fun podcast where people can come on and and enjoy themselves and laugh and talk shit yeah, you know what, Bill? That that was the thing, man. Like we we I remember us having that convo and we were just like, we don't want to make mountains out of molehills. You know, we want to hear guys come on and feel comfortable to like tell stories, share perspectives, you know, like not be so like on guard, like but but really feel comfortable being themselves and from hosting daily radio in New York for five or six years and growing up in this market listening, like you know, growing up in Boston listening. I just doing it. I got sick of that. Like I got sick of like trying to make something into a big deal that I just knew wasn't. <laughs> and, and, right. and, and this was an avenue for us to still have that sort of connectivity with an audience, but also like get to hear interesting insights. And our guests know, like you come on here, we're not, we're not doing gotcha stuff. You know, we're like, we're just going to give you the chance to actually express yourself. I was talking to Jalen about CC, uh, two weeks ago and I, and, and I said this to you, um, how much the conversation I had with you a couple months ago reminded me of when I talked to Jalen in 2010, where he wanted to have an impact in media, but not in the traditional course of how athletes are supposed to have an impact in media, where it's like, all right, put a suit on, sit behind the desk, move your hands, take your turns. <laughs> and Jalen was laughing because he, he's known you. Obviously, you guys have known each other for a long time, but he's like... Yeah. He's like, yeah, I, I knew CC wasn't built for this life. <laughs> he was doing get up and he had a suit on and he wanted to keep his hat on. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, this guy is not going to make it at ESPN. <laughs> and, uh, Yo, I'm so glad I did that, though. <laughs> like, I'm so glad, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that they hired me and I got the chance to do that during my final year to let me know that, like, I wanted to, like, do something less traditional. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's that's that's not something that I can really fit into. And like I said, I mean, I can't really probably do a baseball game either because I'm going to drop an F-bomb at some point. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. So I like talking about sports like a regular person. And I'm a huge sports fan. And, you know, whether it's my group text with, with Ryan and the guys that we're in there with or my guys from home, like we have serious, passionate conversations about sports. And sometimes it ain't always clean. It is what it is. And <laughs> and I want I want to get that across. You know what I'm saying? Just, just like everybody else in their friend circles had these conversations. This is what we talk about. Well, I'm excited to have you for the uh for the basketball bubble. I think the yes. basketball bubble is gonna be amazing. Like my 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 wife wanted to go see friends that we have in Santa Inez this weekend. And I'm like, have fun. 
I'm going to be in front of a TV for three straight days. Yes. You tell me how it goes. You know I, what? I'm just so ready. Yeah. And, and I didn't think I would be, but I'm like, in, even the scrimmages, I'm like into it. The scrimmages are good. Like watching Bo Bo do his thing finally. Yeah. Like It's been fun. And even like for me, I, I didn't think I would be a big baseball watcher, but I'm watching every game. Like, I, like I'm watching my guys pitch. I watched Lester pitch last night. Like I watched Sonny pitch. I watched Bauer pitch. Like I'm having a good time just being an actual real sports fan. Like I love it. It's, it's well, great. we were all like Tom Hanks on the Castaway Island, and then oh. just waiting for something to show up on shore. Right? It was like, <laughs> oh, some FedEx packages. What are these? <laughs> oh, an ice skate. And uh, oh. that's how I felt with the baseball. I, I'm totally with you. I watched. I always only watch Red Sox games. I'm sitting there. I'm watching that. I was uh, watching WNBA. It's like, oh, people are yeah. playing sports, and it didn't happen 25 years ago. This is great. <laughs> right. I No, it, it makes you wonder. Rather, remember when we went through that like brief period of time where we wondered, like, can we just on a daily basis watch old games? Like, can we can we go through this during this period of time? The answer then, was yes for two months. Exactly. <laughs> like for for a brief period of time, it was like it was cool. I remember like uh, watching game game five of the '96 World Series. I'm like, oh, this is great. And then eventually, I'm like, man, I needed something. As soon as Serie A came back, I was like on every Serie A game, just something that's live. And and it fe it feels good to have it. The NBA, I do think it it looks good and there's also something that you can connect with with like a basketball tournament right like even yeah, yeah it, it feels there's like a legitimacy embedded in it also helps that we had 75% of the regular season right like so it makes it easier to accept but i think it it feels like just watching the scrimmages didn't feel like watching exhibition it felt like very legitimate no the guys stayed in shape i think it's fun that there's some teams that are different you know like yeah. portland has Nurkic back and Collins. Yeah. And are, are a completely different team now and a team that if they can get in the playoffs, I think would actually be tough to play. Uh, the Lakers lose Bradley. They lose Rondo. Now they have to like really rely on Caruso. Yeah. Indiana loses Sabonis. They have to figure out their new strategy. Philly's playing Simmons at power forward. The Celtics have Kemba who, depending on who you talk to, like this is a really serious arthritis thing that he might have going with his knees like it's and he it doesn't sound like uh it got any better over the last four plus months so that's a huge wild card and then you lose home court advantage and it's like anybody can beat anyone in this bubble yeah. you know whereas like for milwaukee it was such a huge advantage to be the one seed and now it's like what does that even mean if they play philly in round two in a bubble who fucking cares like they, who cares <laughs> who's one and who's four it doesn't matter so i don't know it, it, it I'm, i definitely think it's there's so many storylines going on plus you have lebron try you know this could be his last chance yeah and i want to see jokic like like light now he's skinny i saw him dunk the other day i'm like yo if he's doing that moving around like Denver's gonna be really good too i mean i mean i want to see uh luca in a in a series like i want to see him in a playoff series like he catches fire like He's gonna put some. He's gonna he's gonna fuck up somebody's championship plans. I'm telling you, like it's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, I was I was debating on him for first team All NBA, hmm. trying to figure out if I could squeeze him in, but I over ended up going, over who? Well, I ended up cheating a little bit. I put Davis at center, so I could have uh, Giannis and Kawhi at forward, and then LeBron and Harden as guards. I put LeBron <laughs> at guard. That was my big cheat. <laughs> So wow. he, played point, he played point guard. Yeah, he did. I was just like, yeah, he did. I was just like, these are the best five guys I saw this year. I want to put them on the first team. This would make sense as a team if these five guys played together. They And so, anyway. But um, you, you know what's crazy? Like, just thinking about it as a tournament style, like, everybody keeps saying, like, watch out for Houston, right? Because this feels like the kind of area where Harden could thrive. But see, I've been thinking a little bit of what you've been thinking too. Like, I think Luca is dangerous in this kind of setting too. And there's, mm. I don't know, there, there's something, I don't know. See, you, you tell me if this is a real thing, but it feels like in this kind of setting, there's some kind of like competitive switch that, that can go off for certain guys in this setting where they're like, oh, no, no, this is, you know, this is my tournament. I, I can carry a team for a series. I can do that when I'm not playing on the road. There's something about that that feels real. I don't know why, but it does. Yeah, 1,000%. I mean, you even look at, like, Luka, but you even look at, like, somebody like Jason Tatum. Like, Tatum can get get in a bubble and just, like, go crazy. And then the Celtics win the championship. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's so many different guys that can kind of just go off in this tournament kind of AAU setting that they're used to and and really win this thing. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't think it's going to be in the who we think is going to be in the finals. I think it's going to be I honestly think it's going to be Boston and Denver. That's who I'm picking. Wow. wow Denver. Yeah. I like Denver. I feel it I always go like if my life depended on it, who am I picking? I think the Clippers are the safest bet mm. because they're they're all healthy. The team is is pretty malleable in a bunch of different ways and I do feel like the Lakers you know, they they are going to have some issues on the guard standpoint where they're relying on like Caruso and Quinn Cook. These are guys who have never been in big games. The same thing with Philly where everybody's like, no, Shake Milton, they figured this out. And it's like Shake Milton's played for two weeks. He's never been in a big game in his life. Like <laughs> right. everybody always discounts, you know, reps and pressure and just, you know, to, to say Philly and by the way, I'm scared of Philly because of Embiid, but like, all right, they just figured out that lineup right before the pandemic hit. And this is going to be what carries them to the finals. Like Shake Milton's going to climb on that Shake Milton horse and <laughs> ride him for four rounds. The guy just got here. So yeah, I think the Clippers, the Kawhi piece, yeah, the defense, the malleability, the fact that the 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 worst thing they had was no home court advantage because any playoff game, there's half the fans on the other team are in the building. So now that's taken away too. Good yeah. coach. Yeah. So. I trust I trust Doc. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I I like I trust Doc too with having the right touch for this unique setting, you know? Like mm. bes like besides the fact that he's, you know, he's an in incredible coach in a million different ways, like I do I I think it's, you know, to be able to get the most out of your team and keep them also right mentally during this. I think that's going to be a little bit of a unique challenge for coaches, and I trust Doc with that group. I I agree with you, Bill. I think the Clippers are the safest safest pick, and in the East, I actually I love Milwaukee, but I I like the Celtics. Oh, I, I love hearing this, guys. Thank yeah. you. This is really nice of both you. Such a great way to start our relationship. I like. I'm a I'm a young legs guy in weird situations like this. I was talking to my pod last week about the '99 season, which was condensed. And it really kind of favored like somebody like Duncan, who was at that point second year in the league, just running a mock. Yeah. Um, the Knicks had Canby and Houston and Sprewell. They just had this young energy to them. So it, he, yeah, he was pretty. Yeah. yeah he, <laughs> he was like, but I mean, that was the four point shot year, though. Um, yeah. But that would seem to favor the Celtics. But yeah, you know, that one of the things I'm worried about my dad was talking about this with me last night was does Philly just say we're good at number six. We're going to stay here. Mm. And then it's Celtic Sixers round one where if Tice gets two fouls in the four minutes in the first quarter, and now we have like Ennis Cantor defending Embiid or Grant Williams, like it gets dark fast for, <laughs> for the South. So I, I would rather <laughs> not see uh Philly. Anyway, all right. So your podcast. Oh, good. Well, and they just added Iguodala too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, the teams that are well coached that have the vet, like Jimmy Butts. Yeah. Tim. Him. Uh. He'll show up for these things, and he'll have a he'll carry himself a certain way, and I kind of like that. Um. I don't know. I, that's what's so great about this. It's like, you could tell me any scenario. Like, you threw out Denver. I'm like, all right, maybe. Who knows? If Gary Harris got <laughs> hot, and who, you know, and all of a sudden they're getting weird role player stuff, and then Jokic is going off, and who knows? All right, so your podcast, it's going to be like, like one and a half times a week. Yeah. Something like that. At Three every two weeks, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Every, we, every Thursday we'll have an app. And then, and then we'll be sprinkling in additional ones too. Yeah. And we'll get all CC's, um, horribly biased NBA takes. <laughs> they, <That'd> be... <laughs> uh, 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 uh. So he, 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 so he came just with me to Brooklyn. He said, <laughs> he's an NBA bigamist. He's just married <laughs> to five teams.
That's what, it, uh, is there a dream guest you're thinking about over the next like six, seven months? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, see, well, we know CC. One one year we decided like for we do like a Christmas challenge for each other, like and as the gift, the other one would have to get you know the other host prize guest on, and and then we just <laughs> we totally forgot about that idea, never followed through <laughs> on it. But for CC, it was Will Smith who he actually met this past year on the shop but yeah. so i think that would be a dream guest right cc definitely but i was too like anytime i like i meet like like i meet shack i mean i meet shack I, I see shack all the time and i say the same thing every time to him like oh man i'm such a big fan can you take a picture like i lock <laughs> up like so when i saw will smith i wanted to ask him on the pod but i just locked up man i was just i was just excited to like be there with them and like hear his conversations and stuff but I'm a huge, huge, huge Will Smith fan. So he would be, uh, him and Shaq would be two guys I would love to have on the pod for sure. Will yeah. Smith's secret tall guy. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah? He is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yeah. He's like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, right? Yeah, he's like 6'4", for sure, yeah. Wow, man, yeah. that is yeah. big. Come I, on, Ryan, you got to keep up on your secret see, tall celebrities. I, I've been lacking, clearly, exposed immediately. <laughs> man, I've always said to Eminem is a guy I've always wanted on, and CC wow. is friends with uh, his Paul manager, Rosenberg. Paul Rosenberg. So, you know, we tried. But M's like, you, you know, he's a weird interview. But, like, I feel like if you have enough knowledge, maybe you could leverage that to, like, get a little something out of him that you normally don't hear. I, don't I, know. I feel I feel like he'd come on and be like standoffish, but like you're such a huge fan that you would get him to start talking. You know what I'm saying? Like you That's would hit him goal. with some shit. You would hit him with some shit. And he'd just open up. Yeah. I feel like so. And then anything Star Wars too, Bill. Like, anything C, Star Wars. C, C and I are such huge Star Wars fans. We're like. You know, we, we 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 haven't yet had the Star Wars guest on yet, but that's like that's a goal too. Getting, so, getting some big Star Wars folks. Harrison Ford. Let's Absolute. make him the goal. Yeah. Let, let's do it. Absolutely. That would be so sick. Oh my gosh. Just, just don't tell him to fly his plane to your studio to do it. Tell him <laughs> oh to my stay gosh. out of the planes. <laughs> wait, wait, what why is he still flying? I, he should not be flying. Just don't fly anymore, Harrison Ford. We love you. We want to protect you. He should not be flying. No more flying, Harrison Ford. Dude, he, he, every time he flies, something wrong happens, man. Oh we got oh, to protect him for sure. Well, I've admired the podcast for a while. It's a pleasure to have it at The Ringer. It's a pleasure to have you guys in, uh, in our circle. I look forward to all the good stuff you're going to do. And uh, it's been fun getting to know you. Thank you for coming on today. Good luck with the podcast. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, man. Love what you've done with the Ringer, man. You're you're the podcast goat. So this is a this is a huge step for us, and we're pumped about it, man. Yeah, for sure. It. This is a huge, huge step for us. Like he said, you are the goat of the podcast. So uh, we're excited <laughs> to you. be here, man. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. Thanks, guys.